Hi everyone, I hope everyone's doing well. It's been a while since I had a new video update, so I wanted to come back with one since it's been a, a few weeks. Uh, I've been working on a new feature film, uh, which I just finished shooting, called Forbidden Frames. And this is a part dystopian uh, satire slash thriller slash film essay. It's a lot of things in one. Uh, it's been a, a fun project to work on. Came about very quickly, came together very quickly. Uh, I think it was about, um, I think about five, maybe six weeks ago, uh, if that, that a friend of mine uh, gave me the idea for this film. He said that he'd had this idea and wanted to share it with me and kind of gave me, uh, you know, free reign to, to take it and run with it. So I, I did that. It's, it sparked a lot of ideas of my own. And uh, before... I think it was just a week later, actually, I was ready to shoot the first scene. So, you know, I mention this because it's a great example of how quickly a film can come together when the ideas are there. And when you see the opportunity to do something, you have to kind of strike while the iron is hot. That's what I've found. And uh, this film in its entirety took five days of filming. Uh, I learned, I took some of the lessons that I learned from making the payoff some of you may have seen that feature film. I have uh, the payoff, I, which was done in an improvised, kind of a similar way. Uh, it was improvised, but what I learned from that movie and applied to this one was to create a, a tighter outline. And you might remember when I recorded some thoughts after making the payoff, I said that had I had a tighter outline for that film, I probably could have cut the number of shooting days in half. And that's basically what happened with this film. Um, so anyway, I uh, have I've finished shooting. Uh, it took, you know, as I said, five days of filming. And I basically filmed on, you know, like three consecutive weekends. There's a lot to talk about with that. I, I won't get into too much of it here right now. Um, I'll just say I was fortunate to work with some great collaborators, uh, people who really brought a lot to the table. Uh, this kind of um, production requires uh, people who, I, I put it this way, there are people that I know can play these parts, who can bring something unique to them, who can bring something unique to the project, and without them it would be a very different project. So it's not your conventional casting, uh, you know, this is this is part of, with improv filmmaking, it's also part of working with the resources, with the people that that you have, you know, the people who are willing to be a part of something and kind of take a chance on a project that might be kind of unconventional, might be kind of different. And I was really fortunate to uh, to, to work with uh, people like that on this project. Um, you know, of course, my wife, Brooke, uh, helped me extensively with the cinematography, the art direction, uh, working with my friends Colin uh, Gallagher and George Figgs was a great experience. And uh, like I said, everybody, I think, just did a wonderful job and brought so much to the project. So um, with going, going, looking back at it, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do with this was to really build out the variety of locations that I use. So I knew of some locations around the area that I wanted to try out, wanted to use in a film, and this particular project gave me a good opportunity to do that, kind of gave me a good excuse to go to some of these locations and, and, and film there. So that's one of the things I wanted to uh, do with this film was to use a kind of dynamic uh, selection of filming locations, which I thought would both be appropriate for the script, but also to give it a kind of um, additional visual interest. And uh, Probably more than any project I've made in a long time, this one required some very creative thinking about working on a low budget. I mean, that's always the case, but this one in particular was, uh, there were some, some really uh, kind of out there ideas, but you know, you, you just have to have faith in what you're doing and have the confidence to know that you are doing what's best for the project. And when you do that, there's no idea that's too... Uh, far out there if you know how to make it work. And I am happy to say that this project opened a lot of possibilities for me in that respect. Um, it, it was exciting. You know, when you when you come across an obstacle, it was exciting to think, okay, 
how are we going to do this? How are we going to get around this? And that, to me, is where the fun comes in. I do have to say, though, it was a remarkably smooth shoot, too. I don't want to give the impression that there were, you know, it was plagued by problems or anything like that. It was actually remarkably smooth. But, uh, you know, these things come up with every film, and you do have to be prepared to, to deal with them. I would say, too, uh, just as a kind of a side note, this is probably the most ambitious project I've made in 20 years. And I'm just talking about in terms of everything that was involved, the scope of it. And I had a kind of interesting experience with this. I'll, I'll try to articulate here uh, that sometimes when we make a movie, at least when I make a movie, and I think this is probably true for other filmmakers as well, that you look back at what you've done. You know, you've gone through this shoot and all these tiny, you know, moving pieces have come together and you look back at the shoot and you're almost surprised that you did that. You know, you're almost surprised that it uh, came together. Because I think when we're in the middle of a shoot, we're seeing only the, uh, the small details. And we, I think we always try to keep the bigger picture in mind, of course, and we have to. But I think when you're there in the moment, you're always focused on like the small details, you know, the details of that particular shot or some particular problem that you're dealing with or whatever it is, you know, some small detail. Uh, but when you step back and look at the bigger picture when it's all finished, when everything is brought together, there is a sense of uh, this project existing almost outside of yourself. Uh, because it's, I think that the film becomes bigger than you or, you know, any individual who's involved with it. It really is a, a kind of living, breathing thing uh, of its own. And when you step back and look at that, uh, that can be kind of an odd experience in a way. Uh, now, of course, I'm not finished editing this film yet. I haven't, I've begun putting together a rough cut. So I say this with, with that in mind, you know, there's still a ways to go, but just looking at all the, the, the footage that's now assembled, watching the rough cut come together, uh, you know, there's a lot that, um, I think when you're in the middle of shooting, you don't always, uh, you're not always aware of. And then when you step back and look at it, you can really say, you know, that actually worked even better than I thought. You know, it's, it's nice when it's a, a positive reaction like that. Um, so, you know, I'm right now in the process of editing the film, going to the, still working on the, the picture edit. I have some more, uh, you know, fine tuning to do there and working on the soundtrack after that. And I'm uh, bringing it kind of bringing it down, bringing the, the running time down to, I want to stay around 90 minutes, uh, not let it go on too long. Uh, it's already meant having to cut out one of the scenes, but you know, this is part of the editing process and it's difficult sometimes to say goodbye to a, a, a scene like that, but you have to recognize what works best for the project. And uh, that's where, you know, that's where I'm at right now. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say about it, except to say that, uh, oh, you know, I've been publishing some of the stills from the shoot online. And one of the things I do is put up behind the scenes photos of how I do certain scenes, you know, like the, there's a prison cell scene. There's a scene where I'm, I'm, my character is in a prison cell and, you know, I put up a, a behind the scenes photo showing how I created the effect of the prison cell with actu without actually building a prison cell set. And one of the reasons that I do that, you know, I think some filmmakers maybe are a bit more guarded about revealing the tricks of the trade, that sort of thing. But one of the reasons I do that is because I really want people to see how you can do this on a low budget. I, I won't say it's easy. I mean, you have to, it takes a lot of practice and experience uh, to, I think, get to a point where you can recognize, you know, these little uh, solutions, right? I, I don't want to diminish that and, and, you know, downplay all of the experience and the uh, practice that it really takes to get to that point. But I just want people to see, you know, if you have a vision for a film, there are ways of putting it on the screen. You don't have to immediately say, oh, well, I don't have access to this location or this, you know, uh, a place where I can build this set, so I guess I might as well forget it. No, there are always ways of getting the idea on the screen. It may look very different, but there are always ways of figuring out how to do it. So in my own small way, that's why I share these kind of photos of the behind the scenes, because I really want to kind of in a way to de demystify the process for somebody who may be, you know, maybe just starting out or 
who's maybe struggling with some of these uh, logistical issues going into a production. I don't know. I mean, I, my hope is I, I just put it out there in case somebody gets some value out of it. Um, anyway, this is, uh, this is a, uh, a few, these are just a few of my kind of thoughts that I've, after having uh, just finished the uh, shoot, and as I delve into the editing process, and I'll provide more updates as I go along. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to releasing this film as soon as it's finished. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out this video. And I will talk to you later.